Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday morning, January the 10th. A lot to talk about this morning. The northeastern part of the nation still being hit hard by a powerful storm system. There were numerous power outages last night up and down the eastern seaboard. That continues this morning in many areas. We have another powerful storm system uh, headed to the Midwest, to Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast U.S. at the uh, end of the week late Friday, Friday night, into the day on Saturday. That storm uh, very likely to produce uh, blizzard conditions uh, in parts of the Midwest, let's say parts of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, to uh, Chicago itself may very well get in on uh, the blizzard conditions. Winds will become uh, quite extreme across the Great Lakes Friday night and into the day on Saturday, uh, most likely resulting in some damage, uh, some power outages, the uh, mid-Atlantic, northeast U.S., at least the I-95 corridor and coastal sections, again, will receive some heavy rainfall and some strong winds. That system ushers in some much colder air into the eastern U.S. In fact, we'll talk a little bit more about the stratospheric warming event that we've experienced. Some intense cold right now setting up over western Canada that does move south and east into the U.S. Uh, by the weekend. And again, some of that Arctic air makes it all the way to the eastern seaboard. Could be in time for another storm system, Monday night, Tuesday time frame. Still a lot of details need to be ironed out uh, for that potential system, but there is a chance of a storm somewhere along the eastern seaboard, Monday night, Tuesday time frame, and that system will have some a true Arctic air to, to work with in the eastern U.S. This is a map from poweroutage.us, pretty cool website that shows uh, the power outages across the nation. It's actually current situation here in New York State and Pennsylvania, the top two states right now experiencing power outages. I looked at this last night around 9 o'clock or so. Pennsylvania was at that time the number one state uh, uh, in terms of power outages and in Pennsylvania itself of all the counties Chester County in southeastern Pennsylvania had the most power outages, as many as uh, uh, as uh, as wide of a high of a percentage as 30 percent or so of Chester County, as of nine o'clock last night, uh, had no power. That's improved considerably by this morning, but again, a lot of power power outages associated with this current storm system up and down the eastern seaboard. Well, before we get to the upcoming storm system and the potential for a storm system along the eastern seaboard early to middle part of next week, let's kind of reflect upon the stratosphere right now. This is a, a temperature map at 10 millibars, stratospheric level. And I just want to kind of point out kind of an interesting uh, feature going on right now. First of all, the U.S. is in this particular area on this kind of a map, the North Pole right up in this uh, spot on this map and the polar vortex has been kind of displaced uh, off in this direction from the actual North Pole which is again right about in here but notice right here the uh, bit of warming that has taken place over the last uh, several days here now centered over the western part of Canada again this is at the stratospheric level and what happens is uh, when the stratosphere warms up, it expands and kind of as a natural compensation, the troposphere below it starts to contract. And that uh, means that the troposphere actually gets colder and colder while the stratosphere expands uh, with its warming. So again, take note of where this is right now. This is current Western Canada. And here we go, Western Canada, right now, as of this morning, Wednesday morning, and here is that intense cold. This is at the 850 millibar level, which is in the troposphere, just a few thousand feet off the ground level, right underneath that area with the stratospheric warming uh, at the 10 millibar level. So it's kind of working out pretty nicely. It doesn't always work out this way, but this is some intense cold. We're looking at temperatures some 20 25 degrees below normal, and when you're in the uh, uh, middle part of January, that is some awfully cold air, and this time the cold will make its way all the way to the East Coast. Let's just move forward. This is using the zero Z run of the GFS, uh, the conventional version of the GFS, and here's that intensely cold air 
dropping from Western Canada. Again, it's British Columbia out here, Saskatchewan out here. It uh, extends, it drops south and east. That dense Arctic air, cold, dry Arctic air pushes south and east. All the way into Texas, you'll see some uh, news making weather. Uh, stories coming out of Texas. Temperatures could drop way down into the middle teens in Texas. That does not happen too often indeed. And look at this very, very intense cold. This is the Friday morning forecast map. And then uh, it continues to move to the south and east. Again, we have this powerhouse storm system uh, impacting the mid Atlantic, northeast U.S., Great Lakes, Midwest, Friday night into the day on Saturday. It is on the heels of that system that this Arctic air makes its way all the way to the eastern seaboard. Here we are now, Saturday night and Sunday morning. And once this starts to set up in this kind of a pattern, it'll tend to reload. Doesn't mean it'll be below normal temperature-wise in the Mid-Atlantic region every single day going forward for the next few weeks, but there will be a, a reloading of the cold air and multiple cold air outbreaks dropping south and east into the central and eastern U.S. This is Sunday morning. And now let's uh, see, it kind of relaxes a little bit with that possibility of a coastal storm here, let's say late Monday into Tuesday. And then it just reloads in uh, very, very cold air, well below normal, all the way down to the Gulf, uh, uh, even into Mexico and all the way to the eastern seaboard. We'll just now go quickly through next week. This is a week from right now. That is a cold looking pattern. Again, uh, not only the middle part of January, but by this particular time, a lot of the nation will be covered by snow, adding to the effect of the cold. Uh, and then we'll go even farther in time. This is now the end of next week. You can see kind of a reloading of that below normal temperature pattern here out across the central and western U U.S. Slide south and east. Now we're all the way out now into the uh, third week of January. Again, still some intensely cold air, way below normal at this particular time. This is a week and a half away. We're all the way out to January 21st. And again, there can be some relaxation at times, but then things tend to reload. And here we go all the way out to uh, two weeks from right now, still showing up here with some intensely cold air that, again, pushes to the south and east. And again, not every day will be below normal, but there'll be a lot of cold air. Uh, the kind of the source of the cold air for the U.S. will be Western Canada over the next couple of weeks. Well, let's now go through the surface forecast maps from last night. Operational run of the GFS, a zero Z run. Again, uh, still a lot of impact across New England and, and uh, all the way up into southeastern part of Canada by this current powerful storm system. There will be some strong winds again today in the Mid-Atlantic region. It will be from a different direction. Uh, last night they were howling uh, up to 55, 60 mile per hour in some sections, even inland. I know Wilmington, Delaware, for example, had a, at least a 59 mile per hour wind gust. Uh, at, uh, most of the time last uh, night, the direction was east to southeast. Today it will be more of a west to south west direction probably gusting up to 40 miles per hour or so in the middle Atlantic region still the potential for some downed uh, tree limbs therefore the still the potential for some additional or new power outages later on today as that wind picks up again again probably reaching about 40 miles per hour or so in much of the middle Atlantic region now we'll kind of push forward here into the next powerhouse storm system and here it goes by Friday morning 48 hours from right now We'll have intensifying low over the uh, middle Mississippi Valley heading up towards the Great Lakes. And again, this could be an all-out blizzard for much of Illinois uh, to Michigan, parts of Indiana and Wisconsin as well. Chicago could be uh, setting up for a blizzard here at the end of the week. This is the Friday evening forecast map. Now notice on the east side, on the, in the warm sector, again, that southeast flow of air will warm things up along the eastern seaboard setting the stage for uh, more rain and, and uh, similar to this just past storm the pressure gradient will be quite tight this could produce some uh, very strong winds especially along coastal sections out of the southeast friday night uh, meanwhile out over the great lakes look at this tightness of the isobar pattern out here 
uh, blizzard conditions for sure uh, in much of the Midwest, and that will continue into the day on Saturday in terms of those extreme winds, uh, and we'll see that right here. Here we are Saturday morning, very powerful storm system centered over the Great Lakes region, all-out blizzard conditions here across uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, again, parts of Indiana, Illinois, Chicago included, and we can s start to see some lake effect snows here just downstream of uh, Lake Erie and uh, uh, Lake Ontario here. Notice this pressure gradient pattern still very tight indeed. There will be a blizzard-like conditions for sure during the day on Saturday. Much of the Great Lakes region all, uh, extending all the way into uh, parts of the interior northeast U.S. Here we have some snow bands coming in off the Great Lakes so it, it'll be a, certainly blizzard-like conditions, places like Erie, Buffalo, even into the upstate of New York. Not necessarily significant snow, but there'll be enough snow around for blowing snow and uh, very, very strong uh, west to northwest winds. And here comes that colder air uh, we mentioned uh, earlier in the broadcast. Look at this thickness out here at this particular time. This is Saturday evening forecast uh, map, 486 thickness that's from a thousand millibars 500 millibars uh, basically the rule of thumb is the lower the thickness the lower the temperatures this is some intensely cold air at this particular time and again it's pushing south and east this next storm system finally ushers in that true arctic air all the way to the east coast it will go uh, farther ahead into the early part of next week and the gfs has a storm system here in the east, but I think it's underdoing it. Uh, the GFS <coughs> oftentimes has some issues with a southern low, especially if there's an Arctic uh, boundary around it. Uh, again, it, it has a, a, a relatively minor to moderate type of system here. I think, again, it may be underdoing it uh, and not quite handling that southern uh, vorticity center. In fact, we'll take a look at that right now. This is the uh, 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 forecast map for um, Sunday evening. Let me just clear clear the deck here. Uh, this is for Sunday evening. And one area I want to point out is right here. Notice this relatively weak stretched out area of vorticity here. This is in the GFS model for Sunday evening. Kind of the main center is up across the uh, northern plains here. I think this is being underdone. We'll see how things evolve. The European model has a stronger system down here and ends up with a stronger storm along the East Coast. And I can show that uh, right now, as a matter of fact. And here it is for the same forecast time. This is the European model, kind of a little bit farther south, a little bit deeper of a trough here down across Texas, Oklahoma. Sunday evening forecast map. And here's the northern, uh, northern wave here. And uh, these two may be being better handled by the European model, which ends up having a stronger system off the East Coast. Again, we're talking Monday night, Tuesday time frame. More on that over the next several days. First, we have to get through another powerhouse storm system that, again, will cause blizzard conditions across parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes region, Friday night, Saturday time frame. And some intensely cold air works its way from Western Canada into the U.S., and some of that gets all the way to the East Coast by the latter part of the upcoming weekend. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.